Welcome to Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School. Sometimes we get more information about Bible stories from sources other than the Bible than we do from the Bible itself. An example of that would be the story we're going to look at today, the story of Elijah being taken up into heaven. Now, if I ask you a trivia question, I'm thinking you're going to get it wrong. The question is, what took Elijah up into heaven? Play the musical background for Jeopardy while you think about that for a minute. The answer, I bet 99% of you said, a chariot. Swing low, sweet chariot. And 99% of you would be wrong. In 1 Kings chapter 1 and 2, you have the story of Elijah being taken up into heaven. Elijah and Elisha are together. Elijah takes his mantle as they come to the Jordan River. He touches the river with his mantle. The river parts and they walk through on dry land, reminiscent of, of Israel's entry into the land uh, centuries ago. And once they're on the other side, there is a chariot. The chariot comes down, the chariot separates Elisha from Elijah, the student from the master. And then we're told a whirlwind came down and took Elijah into heaven. Elijah is one of the only two men in the Old Testament, maybe three if you count Moses, that was taken bodily into heaven. Moses, we're told, God buried him. But Enoch and Elijah were taken physically into heaven with God, and in this story, by a whirlwind. As Elisha sees this, his, his, his response is, is interesting. In, first, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 12, And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. What in the world does that mean? We would say today, What's going on? The franchise. Elijah is the franchise. Elijah is everything. He's the franchise player for the nation of Israel. And that's what Elisha means when he says, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And yet, Elisha would step into Elijah's place. And in the rest of the story, Elisha takes that mantle that Elijah left behind. He goes over to the Jordan, touches the Jordan River. The river parts. And God's work continues seamlessly from Elijah to Elisha. The next two stories in the, in the text are interesting. In the, as soon as Elisha crosses the Jordan, he comes to Jericho. Jericho sits right along the Jordan River. He comes to the town of Jericho and the, the uh, spring, the life-giving spring in the town had become foul and, 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 and uh, people couldn't drink the water. And uh, Elisha freshens that spring. And even when you go to Jericho today, they'll take you to a spring on the edge of town, and it's called Elisha's Fountain. And the final story is really kind of a bizarre one. Some kids come out and start teasing Elisha. In verse 23 of chapter 2, it says, He went up from there to Bethel, and while he was going up on the way, some boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. Apparently he was bald. And he turned around, and when he saw them, he cursed them in the name of Yahweh. And two she-bears came out of the woods and tore 42 of the boys. That story never makes the Sunday school lessons. From there he went on to Mount Carmel, and thence he returned to Samaria. Elijah had been God's man. And now Elisha would be God's man. I'm not sure why exactly that story of the bears and the boys is in the Bible except to tell you that God is serious about doing his work through his people. And Elisha was the person he had chosen to get his work done in that time and in that place.